couple of these highest redshift quasars. This requires, these are about a redshift of six and a half. So we have to build receivers at 195 <coughs> megahertz to go look for this. Unfortunately, 195 megahertz is right in commercial TV. <laughs> Channels 9, 10, a little bit 11. Uh, channel 10 in particular. Uh, and in central New Mexico, channel 10 is owned by a religious broadcasting network. <laughs> but they have been wonderful to work with. <laughs> they have volunteered to shut down their, receipt, or their transmitter uh, during the night, early morning hours, for months at a time to allow us to try and go off and do this. It's really wonderful, and this experiment would not be possible without this. <laughs> <laughs> that was a, that was all they were doing. Uh, they leaned over, I mean, the head engineer gave us his home phone number, so if they forgot to turn off the transmitter, we could call him at 1 in the morning, and he could dial in and shut it down. They had leaned over the back. Oh, the God. They've been really good. Um, I, excuse me. I, yeah. The 195 megahertz is the red shifted ultraviolet. No. Oh, sorry. This is 21 centimeters. Right. So this is uh, 21 centimeters. Is that is radio? This is right. standard radio. This is. Uh, but I mean the Strongman spheres you were describing yeah. before. These spheres that if you were at if you were in the universe yes. at a billion years after <laughs> its formation. Yeah. That's where these are forming. Yes. And the radiation causing them is ultraviolet. The radiation. But where we are now, the ultraviolet is redshifted to 195. Ah, uh, sorry. There's one step. The ultraviolet is what's making it neutral. It turns out hydrogen glows, neutral hydrogen glows. We don't see the bubble because it's not neutral anymore. So what we're looking for is actually the gas around it, just glowing away. Uh, and so that's really what we're looking for. It's just fancy. is the twenty-one centimeter red shifted down to the one ninety-five. Yeah, yeah. So that's sorry. So that's the connection. Thanks for asking. That. Um, so we're hooking up a bunch of new receivers on the VLA to try and do this. Now, oh, one other little story I should tell. It's hard to describe how bright a radio transmitter is. A at the VLA. A 200 watt transmitter in Albuquerque, which is 95 miles away, over a range of mountains, and if you're looking the other way, is powerful enough as it reflects through the superstructure of the telescope to overload the front end of the instrument. <laughs> that is how bright radio transmission is. But anyway, we're trying to work around that. I'm putting up some new attempts. So I have a little slideshow here. Uh, so here's the VLA in its most compact configuration. Lincoln Greenhill at the, uh, from Harvard, who's leading the project. Uh, and Judd Bowman from MIT, who's a graduate student, who's working with us. Uh, and in order to, here they are moving them around. They pick them up and move them every few months. And we need to go up and put a new antenna up here because our wavelength is so large. We have to actually get the prime focus, not at the castle band focus. And an electronics box up there. So here's Judd climbing up to the prime focus. <laughs> the grad students are. That's what that's for, right? Expendable. I was going to say, I'm going to turn around here. So it, and we start to put an antenna attached actually to this existing antenna, and the electronics box goes back in the barrel. So there's this barrel which extends all the way down to the back side of the secondary reflector. And so there's Doug in the And how many are you going to do? All 27. Oh, jeez. So here's squeezing in the barrel. Why can't this be done? in the bottom. This is the electronics box that we're <laughs> plugging in there. Why can't this be done outside the country, northern Canada? Well, because the VLA's in New Mexico. Yeah, but I mean, there's 195 megahertz. Oh. That kind of antenna farm is relatively simple to put together. Yeah. If yes. you'll pick up the tab, Hold on a second. Build it. you pay uh, for it, uh, we'll build we're, it. We're, we're, we agree with you. Uh, we agree with you 100%, but we're not going to Canada. 
Oh, it's also cut with me. <laughs> so the trick is that we have so the electronics box is here, but when it's in the bird bath configuration, as they call it, they're looking straight up. There's no way to get up and put the antenna on the bottom of the reflector. And the servo do the same, both of them at the same time. So you get in here and you're installing the box and you ride the telescope over. Ah, oh, so he rides. <laughs> so you have one person inside, then the other person goes up in the cherry picker here and you feed the cables back and forth through a whole hole there. So one person's sitting in here and the other one's there. And these are all graduate students, right? And me. Of course. <laughs> postdocs up there. Yeah, postdocs up there. Will your, will your re antenna um, modifications interfere with other observations? I mean, you, you have let it install all 27 and then have it have to uninstall it. I mean, yeah. So part of the whole design work and one of the things they're actually working on right now is trying to make sure it doesn't interfere with anybody else. That is the key requirement for going up. Uh, and this may be more difficult. The VLA is going through a major upgrade in the process right now, too. So you're having to avoid that. Uh, so you're could working you, your prime so therefore focus, you could, which is uh, easier. Yeah. Sorry. Most of the most of the heavy duty stuff is done at the castle break. Yeah. Oh, okay, so mo so therefore, when these are pointing at something that you're collecting data for, somebody else could be collecting data at a different frequency yes. to see what's going on in that same direction. What the heck? You might as well collect data on another frequency while you're pointed in that direction. In theory, yes. It turns out in practice, no, because the system downstream can't swallow. It can only swallow so much radio. <laughs> uh, so we sort of end up essentially putting filters in early on, just for money. Um, Clarity. But there are a few uh, here, uh, beautiful pictures, because when you're up here, you can sort of get these really neat pictures of looking down on the array. Are you they really all installed now? Are your antennas all installed? No. Yeah. Uh, so we installed five of them, and then we're doing a redesign, so we uninstalled five of them. <laughs> <laughs> and then they put them in the A configuration. Which means that it's um, we were at full extension a month ago. Yeah. So yeah. So this was all done in the winter. So full extension, which is 13 kilometers right. on each one, you're actually not allowed to drive out. They only own the land for the first kilometer. <laughs> <laughs> so we have to wait for them to bring them all back in. They um, don't own the land out there. No. Yeah. Well, they rent it, or, or it, 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 yeah, they sort of a right of way for it, the. It's Indian track. land, or it's Indian land. Okay. okay. It's actually ranch. Okay. And the ranchers are worried about the tru uh, trucks going out there disturbing the cows. So okay. there's an agreement that you don't drive out there. Um, so anyway, um, there was a question here earlier about, well, 195 megahertz. Maybe you should do something else. Um, the, the VLA is a very specific experiment trying to get up and see something quick. And it's trying to look at that hole around a couple of quasars. And if you can see that hole and how much gas is left, i.e. how bright it is around the hole, it sort of gives you a date. This is when the universe reionized. And that's interesting. But this has so much more to tell us. If we can watch the gas as it collapses into these objects, and then as those objects start forming these bubbles of different sizes and how those bubbles are spaced and, and the size of them and how fast they grow, you can tell us all sorts of things about what were those first objects that were lighting up and reionizing the universe. There's a lot more story to tell. But in order to do that, we have to build a special purpose instrument that's designed for this. And so the next section is the Madura Wide Field Array. Are, are you more interested in sensitivity or resolution? <coughs> sensitivity. <coughs> in fact, our resolution is much worse. Uh, and in fact, it's survey speed. Which, remind me if I don't get to it. Survey what? Sur